Welcome to the Digestive System by Jennifer Pryor. So the first thing that I notice when I look at this title, I see that there are some pictures of what looks like my belly and things underneath my rib cage. See all of these things here. I also notice that there's this word consultant here and there's a list of names. Hmm. I wonder what they did to have a consultant put here. So the first part that I see is a table of contents. This tells me where I'm gonna find information and what page it's going to be on. So it says, eat your vegetables. That's on page four. No guts, no glory. That's gonna be on page six. The digestive system, page eight. Ooh, I'm making a connection. That's the same as my title, the digestive system. When things go wrong, page 22. Ooh, that's probably a good thing to read about. One amazing machine, page 28. Glossary, page 30. Index, page 31. And about the author, page 32. We're gonna go ahead and get started on page four. Eat your vegetables. Mom, do I have to eat my vegetables? Yes, honey, they're good for you. Why are they so good? They don't taste good. When you eat healthy food, it gives your body nourishment. What does that mean? Nourishment feeds your body so it can work the way it's supposed to work. What happens to food when we eat it? Well, the vitamins and other nutrients in the food get absorbed into the body. What does absorbed mean? It means they get soaked up in the bloodstream. But mom, how does that happen? You're stalling, eat your vegetables. Ooh, I see a picture here. I see a caption here. It says, once you take a bite, your food begins an amazing journey through the digestive system. No guts, no glory. Human beings need food in order to feed the body. The healthier the food is, the better it is for your body. But what happens to food once we chew and swallow? Food is processed in the body by the digestive system. It is broken down into smaller and smaller pieces. Then it is absorbed into the body. This gives the body fuel to produce energy. We all know how food first gets into the body. We eat it. That's the first step in the process, but there is much more to know about digestive, digestion. GI tract, I'm in this text box here. The digestive system is also called the gastrointestinal tract or GI tract. Gastro refers to the stomach. Intestinal refers to the intestines. The stomach and the intestines are two important parts of the digestive system. Page eight, the digestive system. The digestive tract is about 27 feet long. It begins in the mouth. It includes the pharynx and the esophagus. It also includes the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. Did you know that the digestive system knows when food is coming? This happens even before you eat. When you see, smell, or even think about a tasty treat, the brain tells your body to get ready for food. Your mouth starts to water and the digestive system gears up for a feast. Did you know that eating healthy foods, chewing well, getting plenty of exercise, and keeping a positive attitude all help your body to digest better? Hey, on page nine, I see a diagram here about what my digestive system looks like with labels. So the title is right here, the complete digestive system. 
So we start with the tongue, the pharynx, and the esophagus. We have our liver, stomach, pancreas, large intestine, and small intestine. Page 10, mouth. The first step in the digestive process begins with the mouth. You use your teeth to chew food and break it into small pieces. Saliva in the mouth helps soften the food as it is chewed. This is because there are chemicals in saliva. They change the food. For example, they turn starches into simple sugars. Saliva breaks down food into smaller pieces. When the food is swallowed, when you swallow, the pharynx is at the end of the mouth, pushes the food into the esophagus. I see another diagram here that shows me how the mouth works. So it shows me where my pharynx is and where my esophagus is. And now I'm gonna read the text box. The best food to put in your mouth is food that tastes good and is good for you. Page 11. It makes your mouth water. When people talk about their mouths watering, they mean that their mouths are producing saliva. Another way to say it is salivating. Page 12, esophagus. The esophagus is a tube made of muscle that connects the mouth to the stomach. Mucus glands glide the inside of this tube. The mucus coats the food as it makes its way down. Food bits are moved down the tube by contractions. Contractions are like waves of movement. They move the food to the stomach. I have a text box that I'm going to read first on page 13. The contractions in the esophagus are called peristalsis. Peristalsis is the activity that moves the food down to the esophagus to the stomach. So I have another diagram here showing me how peristalsis works. We see the kid is taking a bite of the food. He's chewed it up and swallowed it. It's inside of his esophagus. The food is here and food swallowed earlier is going down. So each time we're swallowing, we're making that contraction to put it into the stomach. Page 14, stomach. The stomach stores food for a short time. It is like a pouch. The brain tells the stomach that food is on its way. At that time, the stomach begins to make gastric juices. These juices are very acidic. They can break down food and kill any bacteria that may be on food. The gastric juices seep into the stomach and move around. Once in the stomach, the food is mixed with these juices. They break down the food even more. This is where most protein is digested. Much of it turns into liquid. Some of the foods are absorbed into the body through the stomach. Other foods continue through the digestive system. I'm gonna read that green text box on page 14. What is it? Protein is a basic part of all living things. Living things need protein to function properly and grow. People get their protein through foods such as meat, fish, eggs, milk, cheese, nuts, and beans. I have my diagram here showing me my stomach, the esophagus, that tube in your throat connects to your stomach here. We see it on this picture of the girl. Let me go ahead and read that text box. Many people think that the stomach is located inside the belly, behind the belly button. It is actually higher up in the body than that, between the chest and the belly. Page 16. How big and how much? A stomach is about 12 inches long. It's the widest part. Oh, I'm sorry. Its widest part is about half that size. Do you know how much food or liquid an adult stomach can hold? It can hold about one quart. Hmm. Page 17. This is a diagram of the human stomach. You can see that the esophagus empties into it. 
The small intestine is connected to the lower part of the stomach. Nutrients from the food are broken into smaller and smaller particles until they can be absorbed into the stomach lining. Partly digested food that isn't absorbed into the body empties out of the stomach. So I see another diagram here. It's telling me how the stomach digests food. Nutrients are absorbed in the stomach's lining. The esophagus empties into the stomach. So we kind of have a cutaway here. It shows us what it would look like inside of our stomach. Our stomach lining is this like white stuff here holding everything in. The stomach produces acids which help to break down the food. The acids are those like yellow things. The food are the things that kind of look like rocks. And then it says excess food particles move into the small intestine. What are those you might ask? Let's read and find out. Intestines. Most foods continue into the intestines to digest. By the time the food reaches the small intestine, it has become a mixture called chyme. Chyme is made up of liquids and solids. In the small intestine, the digestive processes slow down. It, it slows because most of the digestion takes place there. This is where the blood gets most of the nutrients from the food you eat. Chyme also mixes with enzymes from the pancreas. Enzymes are fluids that help digestion. digestion. Chyme also mixes with bile from the liver. Bile is a yellow-green fluid. It helps the body to absorb fat. Digested food is absorbed into the body. Undigested food moves through the small intestine. It heads up to the large intestine, also called the colon. It's that green text box with a killer whale. Hmm, how long? The, intest the small intestine is more than 22 feet long. That's as long as a killer whale. Whoa, so interesting. All right, we have a couple more diagrams we can look at. So we see digestion beyond the stomach. So we have our liver here and our pancreas and then our tubes that lead into the small intestine from the stomach. And then the small intestine is connected to the large intestine, this wavy looking stuff. All right, so and then we have completing the cycle. So we know that food enters through our mouth and we start to chew it. Once we swallow it, it goes into our esophagus shown right here. The food then gets pushed into the stomach. And after the stomach, it comes into small intestines, goes into the large intestines, and then we also have our liver here. Very little digestion happens in the large intestine. By the time food material reaches it, only a few more steps take place. First, any water remaining in this undigested food is absorbed by the body. The solid material passes through the large intestine. It forms feces. This is waste material. It is passed out of the body through the rectum. We see that green text box at the bottom of page 21. How big is it? The large intestine is wider than the small intestine, but shorter. It's about five feet long. That's about as long as the car is wide. When things go wrong. Uh-oh. Sometimes there are problems that happen in the digestive system. These problems can be quite uncomfortable. It's important to learn what causes these digestion problems so you can prevent or stop them. Like the little green text box. Riding a roller coaster is fun, but a bumpy ride can lead to digestion problems. Page 23, vomiting. Have you ever been sick to your stomach? This can happen for many reasons. Sometimes a person vomits after eating spoiled foods. This is called food poisoning. Vomiting can also happen when someone eats too much or gets dizzy when spinning or running. 
most commonly people vomit because of certain illnesses, especially the flu. A person vomits because the brain sends a message that causes the stomach to contract or tighten rap rapidly, really quickly. This causes the food or liquid in the stomach to be forced up and out of the mouth. That green text box. Nauseated is another way of saying you feel sick to your stomach. Feeling nauseated is no fun. Heartburn, page 24. Heartburn is another problem that happens in the digestive system. It's not related to the heart. It is usually caused by eating or drinking too much. Contractions that squeezing happen in the esophagus. The result is a burning feeling in the throat. This is caused by the acid from the stomach, which rises into the esophagus. There's a couple of different text boxes on this page. Be careful not to eat too much at one sitting. Too much food at once can cause heartburn. Hmm, I have the same wondering. Why is it called that? Heartburn may not be related to the heart, but people feel it in the area of the heart. That is why it is called heartburn. Ulcers. A stomach ulcer can also be pa very painful. It is caused when the lining of the stomach gets weak. Then acid in the stomach bothers the lining and makes a sore. This creates a burning feeling. Ulcers can also happen in the intestines. So we have a diagram here of the stomach and showing that the sores are inside of the stomach and those are called ulcers. That green text box. When a person has difficulty digesting food, it is called indigestion. Indigestion is an uncomfortable feeling in the digestive system. It sometimes causes heartburn. Page 26, gas. Gas in the digestive tract can happen for different reasons. Often we swallow air when eating or drinking. The air gets trapped in the digestive tract. Most swallowed air comes out by burping. Many foods cause gas. This happens when they are being digested. Broccoli, cabbage, beans, and fruits are just a few foods that can cause gas. Even pasta and dairy products can cause gas. Bacteria break down these foods. This creates the gas. The gas is called methane. It leaves the body through the rectum. Most people pass gas 14 to 23 times a day. Certain foods are more likely to cause gas than others. If a food gives you gas, it is best not to eat it or at least not very much. That means when you pass gas, you're showing you're healthy. Great job. Page 27, gas and soda. You've probably had a good long burp after drinking a can of soda. This is because the gas in the air is in the soda. It is called carbonation. When you drink a carbonated beverage, there's a good chance you'll have some gas to go with it. Lettuce and cabbage can cause gas. Page 28, one amazing machine. Problems can happen, but most of the time, we don't even think about the digestive system. It just keeps working on whether we think about it or not. The next time you think about food, remember that digestion is already beginning inside of your body. When you eat your next meal, think about the process that is taking place inside of you. It is a process that helps your body be strong and healthy. The body is truly an amazing machine and the digestive system is an important part that keeps the machine going. So here we have on page 30, the glossary, all those dark words or bolded words are in ABC order here and they tell us what they mean on the other side. It's a good tool to have. And the index is another part of nonfiction or informative um, text. It tells us if we want to learn about something more specific, we can look in the index and it will tell us which pages it talks about it. About the author, Jennifer Pryor is a professor and writer. She has written a wide range of books for teacher-created materials. 
Jennifer lives in Flagstaff, Arizona with her husband and four pets. And that's the end. Great job listening, guys.